Hello and welcome. My name is Ronald Rodriguez, Senior Solutions Architect and part of the Global Security and Compliance Acceleration Program Partner Team. For this security talk, I'll be covering guidance and best practices in architecture designed for secure workloads. We've broken it down into three segments, which are number one, a review of the shared responsibility model with an emphasis on security and compliance. Two, technical design and architecture guidance. And number three, resources and tools available to you on your journey to authorization to operate. Let's begin with a refresher on the shared responsibility model. Part of the shared responsibility model in the cloud is us, AWS, managing the cloud infrastructure and capabilities so customers can easily access those services. When using our services that are already authorized for a regulation, customers gain the confidence that that service went through the proper authorization to operate within a regulation or standard. In both cases of the security in the cloud and off the cloud, you will need to provide auditors, and in the cases of us, AWS, third-party independent auditors, with verification that you met or exceeded the controls regarding that regulation. Let's talk about each service. If you look across all AWS services, each will have a different shared responsibility model. As shown in the slide, from left to right, you can see how each service has its own unique shared responsibility model. When choosing services and designing your architecture, make sure it is clear where the responsibility lands and what you're responsible for in each one of these services. AWS customers inherit the most comprehensive compliance controls with AWS. AWS supports more security standards and compliance certifications than any other offering, including PCI DSS, HIPAA, FedRAM, GDPR, FIPS 140-2, and NIST 800-171, helping customers satisfy compliance requirements for virtually every regulatory agency around the globe. If you're looking for reports regarding any of the previous regulations, you can find more within the AWS Artifact section in your AWS Management Console. AWS Artifact is a central resource for compliance-related information. It provides on-demand access to AWS security and compliance reports and select online agreements. Reports available in AWS Artifact include our service organization control reports, payment card industry reports, and certifications from accreditation bodies across geographies and compliance verticals that validate the implementation and operating effectiveness of AWS security controls. Now applications built on top of AWS services are not implicitly compliant with security controls that AWS services are compliant with. Customers must certify and validate their applications separately by coordinating with external auditors. For example, you can use our FedRAM moderate services in the approved regions to build your application. Still, you should ensure you've configured encryption, data protection, and access rights within AWS services and your application to suffice the controls required by that regulation, and provide clear documentation to your auditors in how this control is met. Additionally, there are different regulation statuses and authorizations to operate depending on when the service became operational and the availability of the service within the regions you are deploying those workloads. For example, not all services are available in every region. Make sure to verify for compliance the service you're using and its availability in each region. My team can help you navigate the right services and advise in configurations that meet your regulatory needs. Always discuss this with your account team or contact us for more information. Government regulators need to know information is adequately secured and stored and that confidentiality, integrity, and availability are maintained. Accessors, auditors, and agencies need diagrams and documentation that clearly demonstrate how the previously mentioned is achieved. You need to consider three things. Your environment and all the resources involved. The flow of data of information that enters or exits your application or system and all external and internal connection points to your application or system. Let's just start with general architecture. You should always strive to build clear and concise diagrams, including a legend that identifies correctly labeled components. Illustrate how the information system connects with external services and systems. Additionally, you should show components or services controlled by the customer and those leveraged as an external service. 
These documents and diagrams should be part of an ongoing effort of your technical team to keep up to date records as your mission or solution evolves. Be sure to include system interconnections, APIs, external cloud services, and corporate shared services and use the legend to differentiate between external services that are FedRAM authorized and those that are not. For those that are not, what controls are being implemented to suffice that control? Regarding data flow diagrams, regulations require a data flow diagram that delineates how data comes into and out of the authorization boundary, including data transmitted to and from all external systems. The data flow diagram is a living document. Make sure it gets updated and reviewed regularly for accuracy. When you're building your diagrams, clearly state where the data is stored, is processed and transmitted, and how data at rest and data in transit are protected. Also, how personal as well as users, customers, and admins access that data. When talking about network, the network diagrams should illustrate logical network separation and communication within your network devices, such as endpoints, security groups, nodes, and any other cloud or physical hardware. Again, the network diagram is a living document that should be updated and reviewed regularly for accuracy. They should include a legend, all network devices, all connections to network devices, type of communications between network devices, if it's encrypted, and what level of encryption is being used in that connection. Now, what resources are available to you to start? Within our architecture center, you can find architecture designs, reference architectures that can give you a good starting point in defining your architecture. In addition, you can find prescriptive guidance in how to implement secure solutions for your workloads running on top of AWS. Resources and accelerators. Now, I'll give you a quick overview of a tool to help you accelerate your authorization to operate. Be aware, this tool is specific to DoD and IL-5 workloads, but can be tailored to your needs and regulations. Reach out to your account manager or my team for more information. The Landing Zone Accelerator on AWS Solution helps you quickly deploy a secure, resilient, scalable, and fully automated cloud foundation that accelerates your readiness for your cloud compliance program. A landing zone is a cloud environment that offers a recommended starting point, including default accounts, account structure, core network infrastructure, and security configuration. Using a landing zone as a foundation, you can deploy your mission-critical application workloads and solutions across a centrally governed multi-account environment. Finally, the Landing Zone Accelerator on AWS is architected to align with AWS best practices and conformance with multiple global compliance frameworks. When used in coordination with services such as AWS Control Tower, these solutions provide a comprehensive no-code solution across more than 35 AWS services. These solutions allows you to manage and govern a multi-account environment built to support highly regulated workloads with complex compliance requirements. The Landing Zone Accelerator on AWS helps establish platform readiness with security, compliance, and operational capabilities in no time of deployment. Finally, this solution is an open source project built using the AWS Cloud Development Kit. You install it directly into your environment, giving you full access to the infrastructure as a code solution. This solution itself will not make you compliant, but it provides the foundational infrastructure from which additional complementary solutions can be integrated. The information contained in this solution implementation guide is not exhaustive. You must review, evaluate, assess, and approve the solution in compliance with your organization's particular security features, tools, and configurations. It is the sole responsibility of you and your organization to determine which regulatory requirements are applicable and to ensure that you comply with them. Although this solution addresses technical and administrative needs, it does not help you comply with the non-technical administrative requirements. If you're looking for assistance in any of these discussions, our team focuses on working with AWS partners with experience and delivery of secure and compliant workloads. These AWS partners can help customers secure various workloads to meet regulation and compliance guidelines, reducing time and cost in achieving ATO. We recognize that architecting workloads to meet your security, regulatory, and compliance requirements can be challenging. 
My team has subject matter experts with knowledge of the assessment, certification, and authorization process, and we can help you navigate this journey. We provide informal advisory services at no cost for compliance frameworks across healthcare, privacy, national security, financial sectors, and more. However, if you're looking for additional ongoing and even hands-on support, our partner program help you navigate, automate, and accelerate building compliant workloads on AWS and reduce the time and cost to production. Our team will help you connect with the right partner for your specific consulting, deployment, and integration needs. Please reach out to us throughout any of the displayed links to get support or assistance regarding your secure and compliant workloads. Thank you. My name is Ronald Rodriguez. See you in our next session. Until next time.